Chris, again, not, not suggesting that Dwayne Haskins can even play in this league. We don't know whether he can play or not. But I think if we're going to find out anywhere, it's with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, uh, agreed. I mean, I think it's a very smart signing by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, I heard everything you guys talked about in that conversation. You brought up a lot of good points. You know, hey, we don't know what he's going to be yet. Yeah, he's a first-round pick. First-round picks, yeah, sometimes they can be bust. Sometimes they're superstars. We know that. They're picked because of elite traits, right? That's the thing. You're a first-round pick because evaluators look at you and go, whoa, he has one or two things that are elite, and he could become a superstar. Now, whether that person works and does all the right things to accomplish and, and really take advantage of his own skills, hey, that's on the coaching staff, the player, all of those th type of things. Dwayne Haskins, to me, right off the bat, has two elite traits right off the bat. One is his size. Size is a skill, right? Big quarterback, Big Ben, Tom Brady, they can make throws in the pocket that Kyler Murray couldn't dream of or won't even attempt. Then the other thing is he does have a big arm. There's no doubt. It's a big time arm. I mean, he can flick the ball all over the field with great ease. But the big issue with him and why I like this signing too is I don't think he's going to be expected to play this year. I expect us to see Big Ben back one, one more year. That's what I'm expecting. And this will give him a year to mature to what you guys are saying. This is a young kid who didn't play a lot of college football. He only played one year. And they were the yeah. most talented team, and they kept things very simple for him when he was playing. So I think it is. And I heard some of the same things you guys heard from people I really trust. You know, just immature ways about how he approached a job. You know, last guy in the building, first one to leave. Just didn't know yeah. exactly what it took to be a franchise quarterback yet. I think this kid's yeah. a good kid. I think he does love football. And you get around a guy like Mike Tomlin and a bunch of other crazy alpha loving football guys. That could get him changed and get him going right in the right direction. I think it's yeah. smart for both sides Word. here. Both sides, yeah. Word. So that's the signing for Haskins. Let's go from Haskins, the low end, to the top end. Uh, what are you doing right now if you're the Houston Texans? What are you doing about Deshaun Watson? Are you saying, okay, he wants to be traded? Uh, hey, it's, it's, it's almost February. we got combine coming up, drafts, gonna get free agency. Let's just get as much as we can. Open the doors and uh, and see what what kind of offers come in. Is that is that your approach? Well, I I, I think I mean I think it's going to go there no matter what to this point right now because I, I don't know where the relationship goes with Deshaun Watson until we kind of see who's hired as the head coach and where it goes from there. I do feel like they're trying to appeal to him and now trying to make up for all the dumb things they've done you know over the last few weeks. Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know how you feel. If, just, if you made me bet money, my gut, whatever it is, I, I would say he's out of Houston. I, I, I expect him at some point to say, I don't want to be there anymore. But there's only there's one thing that I think of that maybe could save it. If Eric Bieniemy is hired as the head coach, then maybe I could see that working out. But man, Houston's not going to be like, they're going to try to salvage this, is what I'm really saying. They're going to do their best to try to make him happy and make this happen because you guys know. I mean, he's special. He's a superstar. Yeah. He is definitely one of the five or six best quarterbacks in the game. He can carry your team when your team is crappy. And that's, that's special. There's not a lot of guys out there that are Chris. like that. Um, so they're going to hold and try to make it work first. But I think ultimately he will be out of there and it's going to be some trade market for him. Chris, would you have known or would you have guessed? And I know he's played only a few years compared to Drew Brees. But would you have guessed that Deshaun Watson has the highest completion percentage in NFL history? No, I would not have guessed that. And I, I, I definitely 67, 67.8 percent. He is uh, uh, Brees you know, is, is at 67.7. But I mean, he is the highest most accurate quarterback by completion percentage in NFL history as, as of this look, moment is Deshaun Watson. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's, I didn't, it's shocking because I didn't think of it that way. But, but not surprised. We've had this, <laughs> but we've had yeah. this discussion where as far as he's a real thrower, a real pocket passer. He wants to surgically dissect you in the pocket. And then when all else fails, he wants to get the hell out of town. And then he'll make plays extending them with his legs and on the run and doing those things. And I'll just say this too, as far as like the completion percentage thing too, you know, 
they, they're not a dink and dunk offense. So his completion percentage yeah. is high while also throwing very high degree level of throws. They're not looking for four yard completions in Houston. He's usually hitting 20 yard comebacks, 10 yard outs, you know, 15 yard in cuts, 50 yard posts down the middle. He's a special, special talent. You know, he's, he's right so, there on the cusp of Mahomes, Rodgers, and Allen. But, but in terms of, um, in terms of uh, what you said about the enemy, I just, Michael, it's just occurred to me because we've been talking, I was, I was saying, you know, similar things that maybe even if it happens in a roundabout backdoor, not the ideal way they lie to him, but end up with the coach he wants and they, and they hold firm, maybe it works out. But here's my issue with that. And it just dawned on me, Chris, is that if you're the Texans and you've done everything wrong to this point, you can't throw. You can't throw more bad. You can't throw more money at bad money. In other words, like what I'm trying to get at is you can't compound the mistake by trying to appease him by hiring the quarterback you think he wants. When, by the way, he's already done with him. Like this is a Cal McNair issue and by extension a Jack Easterby issue. I don't believe there's anything they can really do to make him feel differently about playing for that organization. So the worst thing they could do is hire a coach who if they don't want to hire him regardless is hire right. a coach that they will think will give them a chance to keep him and he's like no I, when I asked for the enemy you wouldn't give him to me I want to I want to be traded regardless now you have a coach that you weren't crazy about what they have to do is hire a, they've already hired a GM they wanted hire the damn coach you wanted if it happens to be the enemy great if it ain't be consistent you know what I'm saying Mike Oh, no, I, I mean, I'll go oh. fine the hell with you Mike. Yeah. I'll talk, but I I, I, <laughs> no, think no, it, it, I, hey, it's just I agree with you. you. you I got mean, the big you got the big piece of chicken right in the middle. So you like, <laughs> I know don't forget about me Sorry. big white chicken um, right in the middle. I'm right here. Yeah. Okay, but I will say this. I mean you make good points. There's no doubt they can't hire that coach or be enemy until they got an answer from a Deshaun Watson. Precise. I think that is something Precise. like you're bringing up the right point. They got to they got to talk to him and be like, Hey, listen, if we hire Eric Bieniemy, you're good. You're going to be all in with the organization, things like that. And then they'll have to have Eric Bieniemy call him off of that and be like, hey, you're good. Me and you are going to do special mm -hmm. things, right? Let's see what we can mm -hmm. do here. And then they go forward with it. Because, I mean, Eric Bieniemy, he's probably saying the same thing as you, too. He might be going, I, I don't really want the job unless I know Deshaun Watson's going to be there. You know, this place looks a little crazy, too, unless I know he's going to be there. So, uh, I think there's got to be a lot of conversations that go on before some of these decisions may, are made. Chris Sims, I'm wondering, you know, you can be honest with us. I'm wondering when you do some of your fine media work, whether it's the Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast or you're on Football Night in America, I wonder if you make a point, you say, ooh, that's a little, that's a little provocative, but I already said it and the red light's on, so you add more to it. And then now you get lost. I think I did that. I think I did that about five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, where I said, Chris, help me out. I said the Buffalo Bills are the best team in football right now, and I picked them to beat the Chiefs. Help me out. Is that crazy, or do I have a shot? No, no, it's not crazy. Not at all. I, it's, it's, I think they're right there in the running for the best team in football. I'm not going to pick them to win. I'm not going to pick anybody to ch beat the Chiefs in one of these games until I see them beat the Chiefs in one of these games. They're just one of those teams that seem to rise to the challenge. The only time they didn't rise to the challenge, they really rose to the challenge and some guy lined up offsides on a fourth down. I mean, they had Brady and New England on the rope, so they're unbelievable that way. I'm going to go with the Chiefs in a close, high-scoring shootout. I think the game will be totally different than the first time around. I think both of these teams will go, wait, first time around, we tried to be balanced and run the ball and do those things. They're not going to take that chance on AFC Championship Sunday. They're going to put the ball in Mahomes' hands. They're going to put the ball in Josh Allen's hands and say, wait, this is who got us here. We're going to go down throwing our best punches with our best guys here. But, you know, it's both, both matchups or coin toss matchups. I think where I favor the Chiefs, Michael Holly, is I still worry about the Buffalo Bills defense. You know, the Buffalo's really yeah. good when they can play a Ravens team and go, wait, they, we can put all our eggs in to stop the run. And, oh, wait, it's the Patriots. Okay, we can put all our eggs in to stop the run. Oh, it's the Cardinals. We can put all our eggs into let's just stop the pass. We don't have to worry about the run. You saw them struggle against balanced type teams as far as the Indianapolis Colts are concerned. 
And not that I expect the Chiefs to be balanced, but like we saw last week, they can run it good enough to where you can't just go, we don't have to worry about it. I think it's going to be a very close game, but ultimately, I just think the Chiefs have a few more studs on defense that'll make a play to win them the game or get a stop in, in some some type of close game fashion, whatever. I'm mumbling. All right, you got, no, you you got, right, you got Chiefs. And now you go we to Lambeau Field. Game. We know who he got. You, 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 you even got to explain Bay it. And Aaron Rodgers. You ain't even got to explain it. That so was understood, need not be spoken. We already know. I'm going like, with the I, Tampa I'm, Bay Buccaneers, Michael Smith. Oh! Oh, going back. I know. Wait, wait, wait. This is, I, wait, this I, my, this my Tom you. Brady. Look, this is my high five. Like, I'm like, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm looking for a high five. Like, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. Well, yeah, what? Wait, wait. I didn't waiting. think you'd say that. I didn't think you'd say I, that. Just when I, I think I got a, just when I think I, you, like, I'm thinking I got you figured out. Really? Well, listen, wow. I, I mean, you know of my thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. That's the greatest quarterback I've ever seen, you know, but it's still a team sport and it's a matchup sport, too. And I think this is a tough matchup for the Green Bay Packers. M Michael Smith, for me, it's going to have to be Rodgers being amazing for them to win the game. They're not going to run the ball on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Nobody has all year long other than the Minnesota Vikings, you know, and it's going to have to be Rodgers getting the ball out of his hands quickly with the short passing game so that pass rush can't get there if they want to win the game. I think that's the way it's going to have to be. First time around, they tried to call aggressive downfield passes and things like that, and he was under pressure constantly. You really look at this, the, the, the Buccaneers' five losses this year. One of them was to the Chiefs. The other four were versus teams who, Drew Brees, get the ball out of your hands quick. Uh, Jared Goff, get the ball out of your hands quick. And, I'm, oh, and Nick Foles and the Bears at that time. It was short passes, get the ball hand, out of your hands quick. That, to me, is the way to beat the Buccaneers. But I just think the Buccaneers on offense, they're overpowering offensive line. Of course, Brady and the weapons, the defensive line in front seven, I give them the advantage there. So, yes, I'm going with team by two points, 26-24 bucks over the Packers. <laughs> uh, but I think it's going to have to be Rodgers being special if, if they want to win. And, and, and he might be able to do I that, like of it. course. We know that. No, this, like, you know, this is cool. No, I, it, I, it hurts I'm, me. I'm not, it really hurts me. No, I, I'm not hurt. Listen, I'm, first I'm off, not hurt. I'm just, I'm just embarrassed because I just thought I just knew you. I, it's not, it's not about that. I'm hurt. It's that I just thought that we were here. You know what I mean? It's just, well, it's just that part. I'm like, well, wow. I what try I to pick with my brain and not my heart. Like, and that's what's annoying about me too. You know, I picked the Ravens <laughs> to beat the Bills last week, but it's annoying because as soon as the game turned on, I'm going, man, come on, Josh Allen, let's go. And I was rooting for the Bills. I, 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 I like them. Uh, I have a feeling that could happen to me with the Bucks. Now, I no. did play for the Bucks, and they do have a special place in my heart, too. Uh, but, no, I said earlier, Chris, yeah, I, I'm going to go with I'm the pick, team. I'm picking the Packers. I'm picking the Packers, but there is a large part of me. That, that, I'm conflicted about both these games. I'm picking the Packers, but there's a large part of me that would love to see Brady get back. Uh, and, you know, who roots for Tom Brady, right? But I would actually like to see him be the first quarterback to host Whoa. the Super Bowl. And on the flip side, I'm picking the Chiefs, but I'm definitely pulling for Buffalo. I'm, de I'm definitely yeah. pulling for Buffalo to, to win again. Yeah, you know? I, so, I, I, I hear you. And the Brady fun. thing is amazing. I mean, two teams, another Super Bowl appearance, first team ever to be at home hosting a Super Bowl. That'll be amazing. And I heard you guys talk about it a little before, too. Listen, you talk about the four quarterbacks this weekend. You know, the I think there's more pressure on Mahomes because he's the king of the hill right now. And it's Josh Allen coming into town trying to take him off that hill. But nobody has more pressure on them this weekend than Aaron Rodgers. You know, I love him to death. I think he is the man. He is almost godly to me. But uh, Tom Brady's already won this year. I mean, it, if he lost, when you nobody's going to matter. See, see, I was about to say goodbye, but then you had to go say that. So, sorry, good. Michael. Hold on. Because <laughs> when you no, say no, this pressure. Is good. No, hey, no, look, man, we get to keep Chris Sims more. I'm good. Wait, but when you say pressure, to me, that implies, or again, maybe I'm inferring that if he loses or if his team loses, that it's somehow going to be a knock against Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he thinks Is that, that what you mean. Mike. Maybe, maybe that's what he's thinking. Who, Chris or Rodgers? Uh, that's well, no, well, Rodgers. I, maybe Rodgers. I, that's what that's what I think. I think Rodgers is way too smart, self-aware, understands. 
you know, legacy, everything like that to where I think he realizes like, oh, Brady goes on another team and still beats Rodgers or, you know, goes and wins another Super Bowl. Not that people like us will necessarily think that way. Yeah, we follow the sport. We're in the weeds. We know all this stuff. But I think the common casual fan, that's the person who's going to be swayed by this matchup. And then he'll have to hear that type of crap when, yes, I don't don't, know Michael Smith. I don't think he thinks if anything, he's thinking I'm 37. Like not that he's got, you know, but you can't, you know, this Chris, you cannot take these opportunities for granted. Nothing's guaranteed. Like as much as I like to say Buffalo's going to be here because it's Josh Allen doesn't mean they got always they got a pass to the Super Bowl, a path to the Super Bowl. So I mean, so likewise, how many more NFC Championship games can Aaron Rodgers afford Still, to not win? Be is the pressure. But I, well, I, mean, I get it. I, I can't well, imagine but, you people know, showing up on Monday too. saying, "See, Aaron Rodgers can't win the big one." I mean, well, you know. I, well and me and you will be there to go. You know, that's a bullcrap statement, and that's what oh, we'll okay, say cool. because. I, See, I, I don't I can give a damn. You. you know, listen, <laughs> all these NFC championship games he's been in, there's only been one of them where he's on the better team. And that was the one he yeah. won. And all the other ones, he was the lesser team in the matchup. And he can't play defense against beast mode and catch the onside kick against the Seahawks. They should have gone the Super Bowl. He did everything right to beat the even Legion the of Boom up one there. Year? Would you, even well, the 15 and one year, they fell asleep at the wheel in the divisional round against the Giants, who came up there and beat them. Right? Remember, yeah. Eli threw a hail yeah. mary at the end so, of the no, first you say half. they were a better team. Yeah, I wouldn't say I would say oh. they were a better. They, they weren't the better team at 15. But they one? didn't get to the NFC Championship that year. The year they were 15. Oh, oh you mean NFC Championship? I'm just saying I'm, the I'm, NFC okay, Championship right, right. years. I yeah. got you. I right. got you. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, I got. I was going to say yeah, yeah, the best, the, the best one of the best playoff runs I've ever seen was Aaron Rodgers that year. They won a championship. And I think they went to Atlanta that year. It was incredible what Aaron Rodgers. I, th- that's, I think that's one of the best playoff games I've ever seen in person in my life. So he's capable uh, yeah. when he turns it on. It's special, but I don't think he's going to turn it on on Sunday. It, 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 it will see. I, I, I got mean, the Bucks listen, too. I, like you heard me say, I think the Bucks are the better team. But trust me, when I had to come out and write it and say it and do all those things, I kept going. Man, am I really going to pick against Aaron Rodgers at home in Lambeau Field in this type yeah. of football game? I, I, I can't believe I'm doing it either. But when I got done in week six and I looked back at my notes, because I got these notes where this is all I do is match up football and I write all Ooh, these I things love down. It. And it's, Ooh, I so, love right, so handwriting. Yeah, I do. Email I'm, me. I'm a lefty, nice perfect script. But Email me some of that of stuff. Things, Uh, One of the things I wrote at the bottom after that week six matchup, I went Buccaneers win this matchup nine out of 10 times. This ain't a good matchup for the Green Bay Packers. And I'm just going to try to stay Mm. true to my studies. And and that way that that's really what it came down to. Hey, listen, your logic is undeniable, brother. Hey, man, enjoy your weekend for the second straight week. This is our Friday, too. So appreciate you falling through. Hey, I'll tell you what, Chris, save yourself. If I was still writing a column, Mike Smith, I'd write a column yeah. on that. On the notes, the no, the study of yeah. Chris Sims. That's a good column. Thanks, man. I can write Somebody that right now. I'll Somebody see you. Be good. All right, brother. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.